Hello. Welcome to Plot and to Plates. I'm Plot. I thought I'd just do a little talk about um, water timers and uh, watering system. Right, this is an old one that I've had for ages. It's called a Holman. Um, I don't know if there's a number on there. Oh, C01901. Now I do the, I use these on um, off of water butts. Now the main thing with a when using them on water butts, you have to have a zero head. So what does the zero head mean? It means that there's no restriction through a timer. If you have a look in there, it's got like a ball valve. I don't know if you can see that very well. And then if I open it up, if you keep your eye on it, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm on about. There you go. It's got a hole right the way through. This one actually operates quite slowly, as you just noticed. I've just turned it off now, and it's rotating back around. Right, I'll just go and get another one that I just recently bought. This, this one is a Darlac. Um, Oh, I'm not sure what the number is on that one either. I might have to look that up and put it on the on the video. Anyway, this is the same thing. Actually, if I take the cap off of here, just take this cap off, might be able to see better depending on which end the ball is. There, the ball's at this end, same as the other one. Right, this one works a lot slower. So I'm just going to try and turn it on and there's a bit of a delay normally on this one. So I'm not touching anything now. There we go. But you notice he's really faster. And you can see the hole straight through. No resistance. The ones that you you can get, I'm going to turn him off now and I think he should just shut off on his own again. There you go. The, the ones that you um, use on a mains, they, um, they don't have the they don't usually have it going straight through and they work off a sort of um, a, the pressure has to lift the valve up and that pressure usually is about 0.1 of a bar well if you're using it on a, a water butt that's not really much good to you because there's not much pressure in a water butt and I think it's 0.1 of a bar per meter high of water so you've got to have a meter high of water to give you 0.1 of a bar and then if you imagine You'd have to have a pretty tall water butt. Now, I'll just show you something else. I also use a filter. I don't know if you can see this very well, I'll take it apart in a second. Just so that the water is filtered going to the water butt. Right. Just unscrew this cap. And. Actually, it's the other end. Hang on. I'll redo that. Right. You, it's the filter. You unscrew the cap. And I'll show you the filter. There you go. It's nice and long. There's actually a little, little bit of muck on there. So you can uh, take that out. And then it's obviously going to stop all the big particles of stuff getting into the valve, which can ruin it. And you just take it out every now and again. It lasts quite a long time because it's quite quite a big surface area. And as then, as you can see, I've got sort of these actually need redoing. I think I've got the hose pipes, and I I usually terminate with a um, what's it called? Well, you know, it's a quick release thing hose lock type of connector goes onto the tap. I've got taps that have got hose lock 
type connectors and you just push them on. Makes it easier just to take it apart if you need to clean the pipe work or anything. The first timer I showed you runs on a couple of AA batteries. No mains involved, just a couple of AA batteries. The new timer works on a couple of AAA batteries, so I'm not actually sure how long that's going to last, but we'll see. Anyway, but in the polytunnel, I got a pack of spare batteries anyway. I just thought I'd show you a bit more of my setup. So what I've got, I've got some soaker hoses attached to a, an ordinary garden hose down there. This one's got a T and the other one has got an elbow. And the same at the other end. There are three of those and they run all the way up to the other end. And it's the same thing at this end except this end one here I haven't actually got it all rigged up yet and it's sort of crammed in around me buckets as well. It's got um, a T on this end one. Out of that hose, let me see if I can pull it up. Right, from that hose it comes to a hose lock type connector which is then going to just clip on like this one. Just going to clip on to my water butt. But obviously that would be going through my timer. And then I just turn the tap on and I can leave it. But this is soaker hose and I'll actually go and turn it on in a minute and you can sort of see what happens. But I'll have to just tell you something more about it after I've done that. See all the little beads of water? Right, you think that's quite effective, don't you? But the trouble is, this hose sort of clogs up after a, a period of time. I'm not sure why, whether it's the heat in the polytunnel, or, I don't know, muck or something blocking up. Anyway, what I do, if it does block up, and you know, it's not quite so effective, I just get a braddle and I punch a hole from one side through to the other near near where my plants need the water and then that like spurts a, a jet out from each side but again that also closes up after a while so all I do is just get the prattle and put another hole through and it just goes like that and it's really quite simple and I found that quite effective last year as you can see it's um, it's certainly working isn't it I don't know if that was any interest to you or any help but uh, I find it help, helps um, with the watering in the summer and especially in the polytunnel just turn it on for about an hour let it come on in the morning that's probably normally enough unless you get really uh, dry weather so I think I'm just gonna cut that there this is probably one of one of my shortest videos maybe so happy gardening Stay in touch. Like and subscribe if you want to. Cheerio.